All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Level Up Podcast. This is the place where you go from agent to entrepreneur, and we're going to have a fun conversation. I don't know exactly where we're end, going to end up, but I know where we're going to start, and we're going to talk about passive income because that's part of becoming an entrepreneur, but we're really going to talk about how to think about it, right? The right way to think about passive income and whether really is there is truly such a thing as passive income. And uh, so, first of all, Greg Harrelson, officially welcome back. It's our first podcast together of 2019. What's up today? Hey, man, I'm glad to be here with you, and um, I can just tell that you're going to argue with me today, so I'm up for the challenge. I am up for the challenge. We both tend to have probably strong opinions on things, and uh, we're probably going to agree in the end, but I think for the listeners out there, this, they, this, might go, this might be like a little roller coaster ride. And it'll probably end up nice and smooth, but it's going to be a little bit rocky for. for That's right. We'll experience some turbulence on the way into the landing. Uh, right. I think I'll actually have to play a little bit of devil's advocate on this one because we probably Please. will end up agreeing more than most people would like. Because yeah. when you mm -hmm. think about passive income, here's what I think most people think of: they think of money showing up in the mailbox without them having to do anything to have generated that income, right? So passive in the sense that they didn't have to do anything active to generate that income. And yeah. so that like that does happen, but is it really passive? That's what I want to get at. Is it really passive? Yeah. So, you know, my, my challenge to the, the industry is to like define passive. Like what is passive? Because, you know, I mean, is passive having a piece of rental property that you own? And, um, and you're getting, uh, and you're getting income off of it. Okay. So you're just, you know, you're waking up and in, in your mailbox. Um, first of all, if you're actually getting it in your mailbox, then you have to walk to your mailbox. You shouldn't be walking to your mailbox to get the money. It should be going straight to a bank account and somebody else should be managing that shit for you. Mm -hmm. That would be a little bit more passive. But the reality okay. is this, as I think most people think of mailbox money and passive, and I just don't really see that many people that have true mailbox money that they don't have to put effort and energy in. Now, let's break down effort and energy. Okay. because and, and so if we think about this for a minute, you know, is passive, is to say that we have passive income, does that just mean we don't have to put physical energy into actually generating that income? Okay. versus mental energy. And if you have to put mental energy in, and that is energy, that is effort, that is something you have to think about. Is it really passive? Mm -hmm. I have been in situations where the mental side of what I'm having to do wears me out more than the physical side of the mm -hmm. things that I have to do, like thinking and preparing, you know, or speaking for four hours in front of people and then having to prepare for that, especially because, you know, you prepare a couple of days before and then you, <laughs> you, an hour before you've got the notes. I mean, that's how I am. Of it's course. not that I'm preparing like late. I've convinced myself that that's how I perform the best. Exactly. Yeah. Just, I'm better under pressure. That's all. I'm just better <laughs> under pressure. Of course. It's just me. That's the, that, that can say that. Right. Um, <laughs> But I am, when I get off that stage or I get out of that situation, I am exhausted. Yes. And I understand there's some physical side of it, but it's not the physical actions that are exhausting me. It's the mental side. So what I challenge people to think about is, yes, when you're going out there and creating passive income, whatever that may mean, understand that it has more to do with time and how much time you have to invest and how much return you get, like the return on time. Mm -hmm. um, most people don't calculate the time that they spend thinking about those situations. They only calculate whether or not they're the one hammering the nail. Right. And I mean, sometimes I wish I was hammering the nail and yes. I didn't own the damn construction company. Yes. Because it's way more, you know, it's way yeah, more. Yeah, because you can't just walk into the job site and make sure the hammer gets nailed by picking up the hammer and just yeah. doing it. Yeah, you, it, it like breaks the process. So, yeah, you have to spend all of your time maintaining this mental span of control over other people doing what they're supposed to do without you being able to get physically involved. It's, it's, it's a really interesting and frustrating and, and yeah. very like, like until you get into that, then you understand it and you realize how tiring it is. But it's very hard to describe to other people that are in the doing that it's actually more mentally taxing and physically exhausting to be in charge of the person who's doing the doing. 
A hundred percent. And then you don't, and, and then we're also, we're not even calculating the people that say, hey, I've got all this passive income and they got like 15 properties and they've got this mailbox money coming in and everything's nice and smooth for like two years straight mm -hmm. until somebody actually falls, somebody kills somebody. And next thing you know, you're in a lawsuit for the damn next 12 months. <laughs> I mean, it's like when you look over the span of your Time, the time that you're, you're in whatever it is, an investment or what kind of opportunity you're going to label as, as, as passive, there are probably times where it feels like it's effortless and the money's just coming in. But the time that you had to put in to get there, and then at some point, you'll have to jump right back in. At yeah. least that's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm seeing. I, I just tend to not tell people that I have passive income, um, but that's a personal preference. Like that's me being based on the way that I define passive. Mm -hmm. I, I, I look at cash flow. I look at the term leverage. I'm leveraging systems and, mm -hmm. and I'm generating cash flow that I might have to be putting, inserting some mental energy in, maybe no physical energy in, but I don't look at, I don't call that passive income. I call no. that income from leveraged activities. Yeah, I, I would, I would agree. And, I, and I'll throw you back uh, playing devil's advocate here because uh, I was having a conversation with a, a guy who's about, he was about 10 years younger than I am. And, you know, just getting after it, you know, he's young in his career and was looking for some advice. And he's like, look, man, I just, I want, I want to wake up in the morning and not worry about money. And my response to that was, I get it. But do you understand that when you remove the theoretical worry about money, that worry just shifts to something else? Because if somebody's making the money for you and you're not worrying about the money, quote unquote, you're worrying about the person who's making the money. The, the worry is all in your head. It's the yeah. like it's just it's mental discipline. Like you will never wake up and not have something on your mind, have some sure. physical expenditure of like mental, emotional energy and effort that has to go out from you to keep that money rolling in. And I think what most people look at when they say I want passive income is they're, what they're looking for is a feeling of not having to worry, not realizing that when you have the passive income coming in, you're still worrying. It's just shifted to something else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, uh, is it going to keep coming in? Yes. You know, um, or is somebody going to steal it? Is somebody going to this? Is somebody going to that? You know, if I had somebody and they say, gosh, I just want to be in a position where um, I would, I, I don't have to worry about money. And I, I would ask them this question. Okay. What sum of money would you have to have when you actually could, if, and when you know that you have that sum of money, you would no longer be worrying about it. Mm -hmm. And then some like, what do you think somebody would answer? Yeah, let's say uh, $10 million. $10 million, damn. That's pretty, like if somebody needs $10 million of cash before they're going to not, no longer worry about money, mm -hmm. then I can assure you they are going to die worried. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, because that, that's an unrealistic number. Like yes. the, a normal, a, a person would not normally say, I have to have $10 million before I'll stop stressing about it. If that's the case, then we need to have a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. It's not that. But let's just assume for a minute that somebody says, if I had a million dollars worth of cash, I would probably no longer worry about money. Now, because if, if they, this is somebody that's probably still working. Right. So they're they probably still, still earning, in. right? Yeah. yeah, they still got money rolling in. So they say, if I had a million dollars of cash, then as a, as a security, I would feel safer. I'd mm -hmm. feel more, I'd have more certainty about life. So therefore my, my, uh, my worries would go down. So then that's just real simple math. Then it's like, okay, well, how much money are you going to save each year? And you probably don't make enough to say that to, to uh, where you can save enough to accumulate to a million dollars anytime in the next say 10 years. Mm -hmm. So now what we got to do is we got to figure out how much money do you have to make? How much money do you have to save? and put it away. I, I will tell you the people that I've dealt with when, in terms of this conversation, when they're in the process of saving money, worry starts to go away. Mm, just getting into it's the process. When they, when the process they have, is going to be finished. Just getting into right. the process. And when, they not, when they're not in the process is when worry exists. They're actually, mm. in my opinion, they're not worried about having the million dollars. They're concerned about not being in a and having structure and a process in place to build wealth. Okay. It's it's the guilt and the stress mm. of not doing something about it that I think causes the worry. Not the fact of yeah. whether you have it or not. 
Because if you're doing it, something about it, and you're in action today, with whatever level you can actually start to put some money back, if you're in the process, that is when you start to worry less. Mm. Now, as you build that nest egg, maybe you worry less and less and less, but I can tell you the minute that you start the process, you start feeling better. Mm. That's, That's what really I found process. with people. You know, with yeah. my agents, I'm like, you know, I get, I get kind of intimate with my agents and I'm like, you know, and you know, I've got one young, young kid right now that he's just, he's starting to ton it financially. And I'm like, in my mind, if I can keep him living at the same standards, the cost of living, if I can keep him like that for say two years, I can help, he can accumulate a ton of wealth. And at say 23 years old, he's going to be in a powerful position because he's liquid. Yeah. And then all these options that will flow in his direction, he can actually take advantage of them and not be worried or stressed as much as if he had no, no money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, first of all, that I was, it, it's funny because you, you, you went to the, a point where I, I didn't know we'd get to this point, but I wanted to leave people with a couple, thing, a couple hopeful, encouraging things, right? Because this discussion of, well, if you really come to the conclusion that there is no passive income, there is only income that is either, let's say it's return on time. It's, it's maybe time that you invested at some point in the distant past that now you're still making money on, but there's still like mental energy expended over all this passive income, so-called. Yeah. So if you accept that that's true, like, okay, well, does that mean I never get to like stop worrying? And so I love that you pointed out that like getting into the flow of building wealth, even if you don't feel like you've arrived yet, like that solves that problem a lot of times. It gives you that mental freedom to go, hey, I'm in the process. Things are going in the right direction. I've got money stacking up in the bank. You know, I've like things are going in the direction that they should. And it kind of lowers that, that worry. So I love that. Yeah. And, and I, what I'll add to this is worry is a state of mind. Mm -hmm. Worry is not real. Right. Worry is just a state of mind that you choose. It's a state of mind that you, no one actually puts worry on you. Mm -hmm. You choose to either worry or you choose not to based on your perception of reality at the moment. Mm -hmm. There are people all over the country and all over the world that have so much less than we do and they're not worrying about it. Right. And then there's people that have more that are worrying themselves to death. Mm -hmm. So what is worry? How can worry, if one person that has little has no worry, one person that has more has a lot of worry, and another person that has a lot of more is not worrying, and this person that has nothing is worrying, and this person that has a little is not worrying. You see, it's worry is something that you choose. Mm -hmm. That's the reality of it. And that's my reality of it, at mm -hmm. least. You know, I did a coaching call about reacting versus responding yesterday with my co company. And it's like, you know, um, it, it, it's kind of like a choice. You can either react, which usually takes power away, or right. you can respond, which gives you power. It's a choice. It's a state of mind. Right. It's something that we choose to do. No one can control us. So, you know, I, I just challenged the whole thing about worrying. I just challenge that that's some, that might be a, you know, for those that are listening that are like, what the hell is Greg talking about here? I would challenge all of you to do this. Those that are worrying, ask yourself this question. Is you worrying giving you some sort of payoff? Is you being worried about it? Does that give you an excuse, a justification to not take action? Is that put you in a weaker position? Is that like, like, so sometimes when, you know, let's just say that I decide to look at something as half full versus, um, you know, half empty. Mm -hmm. You know, if I look at it as half empty, well, it's half empty. I can't do anything about that. Okay. You know, it's like that, that, that mindset sometimes is, is, is followed up with a justification of why you can't move forward. Well, I'm worried about this, so I could never make that investment. I'm worried about this, so I could never do this. Well, I'm worried about that they're going to feel, they're not going to like what I have to say, so I can't prospect. Well, I'm worried they're not going to like my Facebook post, so I don't need to do that. I'm worried that this, this direct mail piece is not really that good, so I don't need to send that. I need to work on this a little bit more, so then I don't have to do what I'm really supposed to do, which is make some calls. Right. Yeah, that's you know, interesting. We are... We are our roadblock. Yes. No one else is. Yeah. 
<laughs> what were we talking talking about? Passive what is, versus... We're talking about passive yeah. income. Okay, but yeah, so passive income. Because, yeah, but, but that is the root of it. I feel like that's why we chase so hard versus, you know, like in certain circles, you get into just the ego of how much passive income do you have? That's, that's a different conversation. For people that don't yet have it or are just getting into it, maybe they have, a, you know, a couple of rental properties or something like that. I think they are looking for a way out of the mental burden of building wealth. Yeah, I wrote down here. Um, I think maybe sometimes some of us, and this might be a little bit for myself, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking about if I took the amount of money that I make right now, that's yeah. direct, directly correlated to me developing real estate agents, coaching real estate agents. And, and somebody was to ask me, Greg, you're making X. If you could make X and not have to develop talent and be around these real estate agents, would you be okay with that? You know, if it was just passively coming in and you could sit and just collect that same amount of money in your mailbox and not have to damn interact with these agents, I'd say, hell no. Mm -hmm. I want to be around those agents. Yeah. You know, so I think sometimes people like are using the term passive and want to build this to get away from something that they're actively doing. Agreed. And so I think, you know, it, what we can also look at, look at is how can we bring, bring joy back into the activities that we're currently doing to earn the income that we earn. Because I almost feel like people say, well, you know, like you've got a job or, you know, and they don't use job as a, like nine to five, but you know, at, around my office that people are like, we'll talk about, yeah, you know, well, we got a job to do. And I'm like, I'm thinking job. I haven't had a job for like 20 years. <laughs> I've been playing a sport. Right. It's like, I don't call tennis a job. No. Yeah, so why would I call real estate? Because I love it just as much as I love tennis. Mm -hmm. Real estate's passive income for me. If I was making money playing tennis right now, we could call that passive income because I'm playing a sport, getting paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're 100% right. And I think what people are looking for uh, they think they want the passive income in, in the sense that they, like if you ask them now, like, hey, if you can make the same amount of money and you didn't have to go out and list homes, you didn't have to work with clients and stuff like that. I think a lot of agents would say, yeah, it'd be great. I'd love to, you know, uh, freeze me up to go do other stuff, right? But at the end of the day, I think if we actually got that, we would find that we're missing something. And what I think what we're missing is there's a fulfillment and a satisfaction of applying rare and valuable skills to solve real problems for real people. And the more that we can do that and we get our income from that, whether it's, you know, however leveraged or passive it might be, like there's a, there's a satisfaction as human beings that we need inside of us that we're working to give value to other people. And if we truly got passive income where it's literally just rolling in and it's not at all linked to our efforts or our energy or anything now or in the past, I think we get, we just turn inside of ourselves. I mean, if you look at people that inherit large amounts of money, they're definitely not the happiest people. So yeah. it's not an automatic straight line that, well, if we just took care of people's worry about money, then everything would be fine, right? It's, it's, it's usually the opposite of the truth. And I think as uh, one of the things that I've worked on and partially inspired by some of these conversations that you and I have is leverage. And we need to do a whole other conversation about this for another episode. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that the more that I understand passive income, the more that I look at guys like you, that as you've risen up and you've gone from agent to entrepreneur, you're better at leveraging. And, but you're still applying rare and valuable skills. You're just applying them in bigger settings. And so the payoff is bigger. Yeah. And sometimes that means yeah. the payoff is five years down the road. In other words, the effort that you're putting into, let's say buying offices, you might take a loss on that for the next couple of years. I don't know the numbers, but let's mm -hmm. say you take a loss on that for the next couple of years. Does that mean when it starts turning a profit three years from now that it's passive income? Well, not really. It just means it's shifted in time. It's still the application yeah. of Greg's rare skills and abilities that cause that income to happen. And I think, but there's a lot of satisfaction in that. I think that's why you wouldn't take yourself out of the game because you get the satisfaction of really being in the trenches. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're, I, I mean, I agree with a, quite a bit of what you, what you just said. You know, it's like, I think passive is a scary uh, way for, um, for me. I think passive is a word that I don't like to describe. I don't like to use that as a description of something. Right. Because right. when I hear passive, I hear I'm withdrawing from that activity. Well, hell, if I don't want to do that activity, I've already withdrawn from it. I don't do much that I don't like to do. Yeah. Okay. If it's not, I tell my family, my friends, my, my, my staff, my agents, if it's not funny, I ain't freaking doing it. I mean, if it's not fun, I don't freaking do it. Right. So when I hear passive, I think of withdrawing. 
Okay. And that's probably the disconnect, or at least the, 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 the conflict that I have with the word. You know, I mm -hmm. understand that most people, you know, they use the term passive as, you know, maybe they've done this and they put themselves in position, made some investments, and they do have income coming in with little effort. And I can accept that for them, that word passive as a description, it, it fits for them. I just hear passive and I say, that means you were withdrawn. And at some point it doesn't become passive. Right. Very seldom do we have long years, long sustainability over long terms of a, a, a long amount of time where money just comes in in the mailbox and we don't have to jump back in and get involved again. Yep. So a lot of times the passivity of it is temporary. Mm -hmm. And so when we're in that one zone or the phase where we're experiencing passive is when we get on the, 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 uh, the podcast and talk about all this passive income. But then all of a sudden, when we go into the next phase, we're all this, damn, we got to jump right back in and clean up this mess. And then all of a sudden we don't tout passive again, but right. then we go to phase number three and it gets clear again for another six months. We're like, yeah, I got all this passive income. Right. I've just seen this like roller coaster ride for so many years. I'm just like, I'm just personally not going to use the term. Mm -hmm. You know, it just because I don't want to withdraw. And then if I but if I am going to engage in the activities that require income, I am going to make sure that I'm engaging in some sort of, of strategy that I enjoy engaging in where I don't look at it as I'm working. I look mm -hmm. at it as I'm playing. And to me, that's passive. Passive is more for me is when I am actually engaging and I'm putting energy in and I'm living a life that I want to live. Where I'm not going home feeling like I'm worn out because I had to work so hard. No, I'm worn out because the other guy on the other side of the tennis court wore my ass out. But tomorrow, <laughs> I'm going to go beat his butt. <laughs> you know, I want to be wore out because my competition is just like playing such a great game. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm stressed or angry or worried. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I love it. We'll have to have, we'll have to do another uh, conversation about the, the mentality of Greg Harrelson. Uh, oh, that's bad. I mean, good, bad. I don't know what it is, but yeah. it's, it, it, it's out there. <laughs> yeah. My mindset is, you know, I, I don't know. I don't, I haven't figured it out. I don't, I don't know, know what the hell I'm talking about. You, you enjoy being in the trenches. That's for sure. I do. Um, I so speaking of the trenches, if anybody wants to reach out and connect with you, you're super available and you make an effort to kind of interact and answer questions and stuff. What's the best way for people to reach out? Hey, it works very well just to go to Facebook, shoot me a message on Messenger, and I'm sure I will, uh, you know, I'll reply. Um, unless it's like, you know, this, you give me a to-do list of 30 ideas, um, which I have had that, like, here's yeah. a list of like 30 things. Could you just like actually answer these 30 questions and send me the uh, supporting documents? Um, that one I'm not going to reply to. And the only reason is, is because it's not fun. And remember, if it's not fun, I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you ask me a question uh, here and there, yeah. I answer, a lot of people know I, I really do answer those questions and put some effort into that answer. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it. Um, and then for the show itself, you can go to the level up podcast.com. You can go to Apple podcast, you can go to Stitcher. So any of your favorite podcast apps, you can grab the show there, just search for the level up podcast and uh, subscribe. And uh, yeah, I think that's about all we've got for today. There's, there's some other interviews that are, uh, we've got coming up that are going to be really, really awesome. I know Brandon's yeah. getting more involved in the show, but we've got guys like Jason Mitchell, who's like, I think he's the number one team in all of Arizona. If I remember the, the stats right, we've got Rachel Lee is coming on the show, Karen Cooper, Mark Martin will be on the show in the next few months. Bernie Gallerini, we're working to get him nailed down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> slippery. Bernie's a slippery one. So we got to get him on the show. We've I got better start, I'll stuff. text him a little bit and tell him, what are you doing? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks so much, everybody for watching and listening. We appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one.